Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about the Windows Engine box from CyberSec Labs. So we're going to start off with our usual nmap scan and we'll notice that port 80 is open, which is HTTP. We have port 135 open, which is RPC. Then we have SMB open on port 139 and on 445. Then we have a remote desktop protocol open. We also have WinRM open and then some higher RPC ports. So from all of these ports, HTTP is most likely the, the first thing that we want to check out. So let's get started on that port. So we're going to first start some automatic recon. Uh, so we're going to run a GoBuster search uh, with our word list and our URL, which is just going to be our IP. So you want to have that running in the background. I'm not going to run it right now. But that's something that you would want to run whilst you're checking out the web page yourself. And we see, okay, this is an Internet Information Services. Um, and there's nothing really too interesting here. This picture points to a Microsoft.com link. So that's not something we can check out, really. Uh, and in the meanwhile, your scan will have found something. So let's uh, see what our scan found. And our scan found is aspnet underscore client and this block. So let's go to block first. So we'll go to slash blog. And while that's loading, we can maybe take a look at some other ports. So another thing we can try is SMB client uh, without any credentials. Let's see what the host, uh, what the domain name is. It's engine. So you can do engine slash uh, any user. Let's pick guest here and then at the IP. 31.1.16. Seems like this blog is really slow to load. Um, oh, it loaded. Okay. Uh, in the meanwhile, SMB client is also trying to connect. Uh, so let's get to this blog first. So we have Alex's blog. Um, and are we already an administrator? Oh, that must have been a session from before when I did the box. But uh, so when you go to the blog, you will notice that you have a login page here. And on this login page, if we try something very basic like admin admin, we will notice that admin admin is used. Now, I would always suggest trying admin admin on these kinds of login panels because that's very common. So now we have access to the admin location, admin page of this um, this thing here. And if we go to about, we'll notice, okay, we're running blockengine.net and our version is 3.3.6. In the meanwhile, we can log in with the guest account on on uh, SMB client here. But we, uh, we have a version now for some software and that was block engine. So if we go to block engine and search that on search exploit, we will see that for version 3.3.6, which is the version we have, we have a remote execution vulnerability. So let's take a look at the link. So we're going to add dash W here to get the links. And for this one, we'll open that link. So let's take a look at this exploit, right? So we have a path traversal leading to remote code execution. Um, and then we have an attack. So we want to upload a file to slash admin app editor edit post. So that's going to be after block that. Okay. So we're going to want to upload a file here and that file is going to be named postview.ascx which I assume is this code here. Okay, so you want, want to copy that, the code from there down to the bottom here. And then you would want to upload that as postview.ascx, right? Here you would change your IP address and the port to what you want. Uh, so that's the whole file. And then you can save that and we can upload that to the machine here. So we're going to go to file manager and then upload and we can upload our postview.ascx. So that's completed uploading. And then this exploit says we have to uh, 
uh, go to this URL to trigger our exploit. So for that, let's get a, a listener here. I'm going to use RL rep so that our, in our listener, I can use the up and down arrow keys to go through command history. We'll do a dash L for listen uh, and for no reverse host lookup, V for verbose, and then the port is going to be 4445. So we're listening on that port. Now, if we go to where it said we had to go to, which was oh, a question mark team and then the app data files. So let's go there. So after block, and we see that takes a while to load and <clears throat> we don't seem to be getting a shell back yet. That also isn't loading. Oh, but we got a shell back right now. So now we have a shell back but this shell doesn't look that nice. So let's um, see if we can uh, do something so that we have a bit more of a proper shell or when we type, it actually comes after this. So for that, we can maybe upload um, upload netcat to the server. Uh, so for that, I'm gonna uh, go to user share windows, windows binaries, windows resources. Let's see, um, is it Windows resources binaries? Yeah, we have netcat.exe here. So then we can do Python 3-m and then uh, http.server on port 80. And now we want to upload a file. Uh, so. I've uploaded files on Windows boxes before, so let's see if we upload. We have in WinRM, we're not an evil WinRM. Um, we can upload. I um, think we have an upload through uh, search util. Oh, with upload it was there, I just didn't see it. Yeah. Boats uh, uploading our binary with search util. Okay, yeah. So then you can go to that video that it mentions, and that's going to show you how to upload. Uh, so let's see here. So it seems search util dash url cache dash split dot dash f. Okay, so we're going to do search util dash url cache dash split dash f and then our IP address and then slash netcat.exe and we'll download that to netcat.exe. I'm not sure if this is exactly going to work because maybe we don't have write permissions in this folder and no we don't. So let's cd to there, make a new directory, call it pink, cd pink. Now we are here and now we can do our cert util again and upload netcat here. So that worked. So now we can break this to a netcat dash lnv p uh, for port 1234. And then here we can do our netcat.exe uh, dash e commands.exe and then our IP address and the port. Uh, and I'm also no, well, let, let's see if that works. So that might not work. Oh, that works. Okay, perfect. But now this shell, we don't have that shell. So uh, I think if we do, um, if we do star, wait, let's get this back. If we do start dash B for background, and that's going to start and give us our shell back. Yes. So now we have our shell back up here because we ran this command in background. And that's the equivalent in Linux of putting in a, an, an ampersand behind it, so so the ampersand, right, behind the command. Um, so let's see, from here we can maybe try to upload um, WinPiece, see if that finds anything. So let's go to uh, opt privilege escalation script and WinPiece, WinPiece exe, WinPiece bin uh, x, no, is it uh, x64? Then release, and here we are. Now here we have our wimpies.exe binary. Then we can do, it's probably my command history, our Python server again, and 
using our cert util command, we can upload winpiece to the box. winpiece.exe, winpiece.exe. So now from here, we can run winpiece.exe. So that's going to start running here. Um, so we'll wait for that to give us some output. Okay, that's a lot of output instantly. And let's see, we see here that we have the SE impersonate privileges. So we could try exploiting that, but I've already done that before. And you can find that in my video. So if I do, um, it was with incognito in Metasploit in Metaprinter. Uh, so in my imposter video, if you go there, you will see how to exploit that. But we're not going to do that right now because we will see there's also some auto logon credentials for the administrator account. So let's see if we can use these to log in to the administrator account. So for that, we're going to use evil winrm i for the IP address and dash user administrator and then dash b for the password. So let's see if that gives us a shell as administrator. Evil WinRM can sometimes take a little while, it seems. And I've also done this before as well. So if you go to auto logon, you will see finally in secret, I find auto logon credentials and tried logging in using them. And this is a pingdraconian.darkcode.com in lead text. So this doesn't seem to want, oh, yes, there it goes. So now we have a shell as administrator. So if I do, who am I? We will, in the future, the box seems to be a little slow at the moment. Um, so if we run, who am I? It is hopefully gonna show us engine administrator. So now we are the administrator account on this box and we have pounded. it. So that was this video. Um, this box showed us that uh, admins use weak credentials and when there is a vulnerable version of software combined with weak credentials, that can allow us to get code execution on a machine. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, as always, leave them below and I will see you back, back with another video. Take care.